Hi, now we're going to talk about boiling point elevation. So again, this is a colligative property. That means that boiling point is going to raise um, when we add any solute to a solvent. So let's go ahead and look at um, our, for, our definition for this. If we add any solute to a solvent, um, the solution of the boiling point will be higher than the pure solvent boiling point. So let me give you an example with water. Pure water boils at 100 degrees C. We add anything to that, it does not matter what it is. We add anything to that water, the boiling point is going to increase. It's going to increase, and that's a clicative property. It doesn't depend on what the actual item is, the solute is that we add to the solvent, the water. Um, you just add anything, it's going to be particles inside that water and it will increase the boiling point. Okay, so I want to give you the formula. It is uh, delta T sub B equals I KB times M. Uh, so the delta T sub B, this is really important. It's the change in boiling point. Um, so this is not the new boiling point. Um, change in boiling point, and I'll put temperature. I know you know that T is temperature, but we'll still put it down. Um, so if I do all of this math and I come up with 3.2, that's the increase in the boiling point, not the new temperature. So it doesn't mean that water's going to boil at 3.2 degrees. It means that it will boil at 100 plus 3.2. It will boil at 103.2 degrees C. Um, so this is the increase, which means you have to add this to the pure boiling point, okay? You add that number to the pure boiling point. Now I, this is going to be the number of particles Technically, this is called the Van Toft uh, factor, and it just means number of particles. Now check it out, if you look mathematically, as you increase the number of particles, notice it increases the change in temperature. So the more particles um, that are dissociated, that break apart into a solution, the greater the increase in temperature. So really quick, if I had sodium chloride compared to a glucose, Glucose is a non-electrolyte, and you'll recall that it's um, I, it's particles always one. This is going to break into two particles, sodium and the chloride, so it's two. Um, so I could have the same molality, but by having salt instead of glucose, because there's two particles, it will increase by a factor of two, two times greater increase. Um, in the boiling point. So really interesting. The more particles it breaks into, the greater the increase in boiling point, and same would be true, the greater the decrease in the freezing point. Okay, that KB. The KB is a constant. I'm gonna pull this over here. This is called the boiling point elevation constant. And you can look this up. Uh, you can just look this up on the internet and find tables of, of the boiling point elevation constants. Um, and then this little m is that funny concentration molality. Um, and I want to remind you the units on molality. Molality is moles of solute, and here's where it's a little different. It's kilogram of solvent. All the other concentrations that we've learned um, for chemistry are the denominator as solution the combination of solute plus solvent. So this is the only one that's a kilogram of solvent in the denominator, a little bit strange. Oh, I also wanted to tell you the boiling point elevation unit is degree C per molal, degree C per molal. And of course, we'll do delta T as your degree C. So the easiest way to um, get a handle on this is just to do a couple of practice problems. Here is question number one. Um, it says, what is the boiling point of a 1.27 molal non-electrolyte aqueous solution. Okay, some big information here. Non-electrolyte, right away, that tells me that I is going to be one. Non-electrolyte, it's not going to dissociate into any other particles, it'll just be one. Um, aqueous tells me that our solvent is water. Like, okay, so we dissolve this non-electrolyte into the water. All right, we want to know the boiling point, uh, the new boiling point, so we've got to find the change. Um, delta T sub B, the change in the boiling point, is going to be I times KB times M. So let's go ahead and plug everything in. Non-electrolyte, I is one. 
the KB, I looked this up for water, and that was the word aqueous, clued me in to look up the KB for water, is 0.512 degrees C per molal, and they gave us the molality. That is 1.27 molal. So look at my units, molality cancels. A little reminder, our I, it's unit less. I'll multiply this one times 0.512 times 1.27. The change in temperature for this boiling point is going to be 0 0.65 degrees C. Now I'm going to press you just a little bit. Does that mean the water's going to boil at 0.65 degrees C? No. At what temperature will it boil? If I come back to what I told you here, you add the pure. Remember, this is the pure boiling point. We add that, and this is going to boil at 100.65 degrees C. Nice, nice. Um, so let's say I'm at home and I put um, some sugar, some sucrose into a pot of water that's boiling. Um, if I had that same molality, which that was a pretty significant molality, you must be making something sweet. Um, if I put that uh, sucrose in the water, it won't boil at 100 degrees, it will boil at 100.65 degrees. <laughs> okay, let's do this second one over here. It says, what's the boiling point if you add five grams of sodium chloride to 500 mils of water? Okay, this one isn't quite as straightforward. So we want to know the new boiling point, which means I'm looking for my change in boiling point. So that's my unknown. Um, they give us sodium chloride. Okay, I can figure out my I. Let's look at sodium chloride. Sodium chloride is going to break apart, dissociate into the cation sodium and the anion chloride. Just count the number of ions, two. We're gonna have two particles. So I will be two. Um, now we can look up the boiling point of water. I actually have it right here. So the KB, or excuse me, not the boiling point, the boiling point elevation constant the KV is point, oops, point 0.512 degrees C per molal. Now, I need molality. They didn't give me molality, but we can find it. So, come back up here. Molality, right there, is moles of solute divided by kilogram of solvent. Well, I've got grams, that's the amount of substance. I can use molar mass to bring that to moles, and I have mils. I can use the density of water. This is a tricky thing that teachers and professors love to do. I can use the density of water to bring that to mass. Okay, so let's do both conversions. I'm gonna start with the five grams. Um, so we've got five grams of sodium chloride. I wanna bring this to moles. Sodium, if you look on the periodic table, um, I'll do it right here for you. We've got one sodium is 22.99. One chlorine is 35.45. Those are just the molar masses in the periodic table. Multiply one times 22.99, one um, times 35.45. Add that up and we get 58.44. My unit on that is grams per mole. So we've got five grams. I want to get rid of grams. Those go in the denominator so that they'll cancel. Mole on top. For molar mass, it's always one. One mole weighs 58.44 grams. Okay, so let's do our math and see what we get from that. There's our five grams. We get um, 0 .086, 0 0.086 moles. Okay, we have the moles, that part. We have the numerator, the moles. Now I've got to get the kilograms, the kilograms. Um, so we have 500 mils of water. And let's use the density of water. This is a trick that we use all the time in chemistry. The density of water is one. So one mil weighs one gram. Notice I put mils on the bottom, so it cancels. Now I'm going to do one more conversion because we need kilograms. By definition, molality is kilograms of solvent. So there are a thousand kilograms in one, oh, excuse me, a thousand grams. Sorry about that. 1,000 grams in one kilograms. So notice mils cancels, gram cancels, and we're left with kilogram. 500 times one divided by one times one divided by 1,000 is going to be 0.500 kilograms. Nice, 
Now I have the kilograms for the denominator. So let's go ahead and put this together. Molality is going to be that 0 0.086 moles, 86 moles divided by 0.5 kilograms. And when we divide that, we get a 0.17 molal. Oh, so they made us work. <laughs> they made us work for that molality. Now we can just take all of our um, variables here and plug in. Let's go ahead and do that. So delta T, here's my formula, so B, change in boiling point is going to be IKB times M. Let's go ahead and put in our numbers. We're going to need to have two times the KB, 0.512 degrees C per molal times the molality that we had to work to get. That molality is 0.17 M. Look at the units. Notice molalities cancel. Those cancel. And so now we will do 2 times 0.512 times 0.17. And the change in temperature for the boiling point is going to be 0.18 degrees C. So that's the degree C that's left. Okay, so I'm going to ask you the same question. Does that mean that water is going to boil at 0.18 degrees C? No. How do we finish it? They asked for the new boiling point. You got it. We add the pure boiling point. Remember that's the pure. So add that and freezing point. Remember you subtract the pure freezing point. So boiling point we add and this is all of this work. Look, we did all this work. And instead of boiling at 100 degrees, no worries, it's going to boil at 100.18. I really don't care. <laughs> we did a lot of work for that. So this is the new boiling point, okay, right there. Uh, I hope that was helpful for you. Uh, if you need to watch the freezing point depression, watch that. I have lots of um, videos under the solutions playlist, as well as some videos under solids and liquids for the unit that you might be in right now. Um, hundreds of videos go to Lean Think for the YouTube channel or leanthink.org. So happy that you were here. Have a wonderful day. Smile. Bye.